you know, two thirds of women under 30 want to be senior leaders. They want to advance. So this isn't about ambition, but it is about women really signaling. They want to work for an organization where they feel that they're going to be able to um, advance and they have equal opportunity and they want to work for organizations that value the things they do. Flexibility, well-being and diversity, equity and inclusion. This is the new resistance. There are so many people in power that are trying to go back to the old normal of workplaces that never were ever designed for us. And in this moment, we have power and we have leverage because of the great resignation. And so advocate for one thing for yourself and for your workplace. You know, allyship is, is not about rescuing. This is not doing things for somebody. This is doing things with, right? So we need to come, learn to come alongside and think about how do we do this collaboratively? How do we show up as partners in, in the workplace and do this together? And, and again, because I think we have as much to gain and to learn um, as men, uh, as do women in the workplace, and we can, we can do that for all of us together. Um, you're going to have challenges with hiring regardless. It doesn't matter if you hire somebody who never was incarcerated or homeless, or if you hire someone who's had a great life their entire life, you're going to have challenges with hiring because everybody's not a fit. So I think if we just look at the natural way of doing recruitment and say, look, you know, there's opportunities to engage a new workforce out there. Let's engage them and see how we can bring them into our organization and our culture. It's the, it's the right thing to do. It's always, it's not always about the really awful discrimination. Um, it's, it's sometimes it's a microaggression. And so looking at how we can own the fact that we have bias, own that we all have that and figure out ways to create a better environment for everybody, that's what's important. So for me, um, it's bigger than making a difference for our clients, even though that's what I'm here for. It's about making our workforce better for the future leaders for the future women leaders, for the future everybody leaders, um, including my daughter. I think, you know, for the, sake of, for the sake of the employee is to really think about what you're risking to force people back to the past. I mean, we can't relive the history, our past history to create the future. And I think, you know, for leaders and managers, they have to actually manage in the moment. You know, part of it's also about assumptions. So I, I'll tell you, I took a class in college called Inequality in America, and it was the migration patterns of poor people across the U.S., right? And there's this assumption that people don't want jobs, they don't want to do things. But there's basic things that you don't have, like a mailing address. Right, because I took this in the 90s, right? And so like we didn't even think about that. But you can't apply for a job if you don't have a mailing address because they can't reach you. Right. And so there's there's fundamental things that like, we assume that people don't want something, and it's more of we don't listen and understand. And we have to get rid of those assumptions and say, okay, what's really the what's happening?